when I, I felt in doubt. But I didn't give up, even though I gave out. It seems like stumbling blocks got all in my way. And when the road got longer, the more I pray. When it seemed like
That's the word for somebody. Lord, it's in your hand. Can't change it. I can't figure it out. I can't even handle it. Lord, it's in your hand. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now musicians, amen. Let's go for them. Amen. Amen. Lord, it's in your hand. A prophetic song in this hour. Lord, it's in your hand. If you will, turn with me to Genesis this morning, chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25. As we look in the book of beginnings, chapter 25. Genesis. I'm going to begin reading at verse 29. Chapter 25, verse 29. I just you may be seated. You may be seated. But you need to get laid down. Beginning at verse 29. <clears throat> you there saying, I got the word. I don't need any weight. I don't wait on you. Genesis chapter 25, verse 29. It says, Now Jacob cooked the stew. And Esau came in from the field. And he was weary. Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore, his name is called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die. So what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentil. And he ate and drank, arose, and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. I learned from that passage of scripture this morning. I want to preach from the subject, Lord willing. I want to preach from the subject, stay fool. Stay fool. Amen. Let us pray. Father, now God, Lord, we thank you for your grace and mercy and for your loving kindness, Lord God, for the gift of life and for the opportunity to worship you one more time, Lord God. Lord God, as we come, stand again behind this sacred desk, Lord, we realize there's nothing we can do without you, God. So, Lord, once again, we come humbly before you, asking you, Lord, to let your anointing fall afresh one more time. And I might be able to share these things with your people that you have given me in our quiet time together. Lord God, as we hear your word, we don't want to be just hearers of your word, but, Lord, we want to be doers of your word. So allow us, O oh Lord, to hide your word in our heart, God, that we might not sin against you. Let your spirit come now and have its way, Lord God. We can't do nothing without you. 
have your way now, God. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. All God's people said amen. 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 And amen. From the subject this morning, stay full. But let me know, last Sunday, I preached from the subject, eat the bread. And I talked about the fact that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ often described himself as the bread of life. And I encourage you, beloved, through the Holy Spirit last week, to eat the bread. Because the bread was all that we need. I told you that the bread was a sustainer, that it gives us what we need to keep us. I told you that the bread was the source of our strength. It gives us what we have to have to fight and prosper on this old journey that we're on. And last but not least, I told you that the bread was our security. That if we eat the bread, we have eternal life. And eternal life is the greatest security that one could ever have. But beloved, if I was seeking direction for this week, again, to replay last week's sermon in my mind, I remember something that I said at the end of the sermon last week. I said that we have an appetite for everything but the bread. Yeah, we have an appetite for pleasure, we have an appetite for fun, we have an appetite for excitement, we have an appetite for entertainment, we have an appetite for adventure, but we don't have the same appetite for the bread. As much as we like to have fun, as much as we like to travel, as much as we like to enjoy life, we ought to want the bread even more. I got no witnesses in here. Our, our appetite for the bread, the deferral, ought to be our strongest appetite. It should be the appetite that we have for the bread. And I come to tell you this morning that when it comes to our appetite, an appetite is a good thing to have in the physical. Y'all with me? Because, because you got to have, you got, you got to eat in order to be strong. Right. Amen. Yeah. You got to eat. You got to eat in order to be strong. You got to eat in order to fuel your body. Yeah, but, but you got to eat in order to fuel your body with food. You got to fuel it with food in order that you might have energy and do your daily task. As a matter of fact, anytime somebody loses their appetite, it is not a good sign. Am I right about it? But when a person does not eat, something is wrong, and normally they get real weak, real fast. Amen? Right. After they lose their appetite. And but let me, I come to tell you this morning that an appetite is a good thing to have physically, right. but spiritually, well, we have to be full on the things of God. Y'all yes, gonna talk to me this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to me, talk to me. We gotta be full on the things of God because being empty spiritually can be a very, very dangerous thing. I got no witness in here. See, see, when you're empty, your mind tends to play tricks on you. When you empty, you tend to make bad decisions. Anybody ever been there? Anybody ever went to the grocery store and you was running on empty? Yeah, I see a hand go back there. Yeah, y'all went to the grocery store and you was running on empty, and you end up buying way more stuff than you meant to buy. Yeah, ladies, I see y'all with me. Y'all shaking up, baby. Anybody ever ever been eating healthy and, and, and trying to do good, dieting and doing what you're supposed to do, and you mess around and you get off schedule? Let yourself get empty. And the next thing you know, you got a candy bar in one hand and a piece of cake in the other. Y'all ain't gonna talk about it. You, 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 you got something that you know ain't no good for you. And I come to take this one, whatever, that it's a good thing to have an appetite, but stay full. Because there's something about being full spiritually. When you are full spiritually, beloved, the enemy cannot trick you with hunger games. God Almighty. When you're full spiritually, the enemy 
cannot trick you with hunger games. He, he cannot manipulate you. He cannot play you if you stay full. When you look at the text this morning, we see the story of Esau who messed around and got empty, Minister Moab. Now, now, most of us know the story of Esau and his brother Jacob. They were the sons of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. Connecting them directly to the promise that God made their grandfather. They were twins. They were twins. They were twins. But they were not identical twins, Sister Maria, uh, because the Bible distinctively says that Esau came out red and happy. Not mentioning the deferral, the features of Jacob. Mm -hmm. But it does say that as Jacob came out of the womb behind his brother, that he had grabbed Esau by his heel. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to this one. And the Bible teaches us that as the boys grew up, Esau was a skilled hunter. Mm -hmm. He was a man of the field. He was an outdoorsman, Esau was. While his brother Jacob stayed in the tents and was a mild-mannered man. In other words, it was like this as we bring in the code of 2021. Esau was a rough man, and Jacob was a mama's boy. Y'all ain't gonna talk to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Causing Isaac to love Esau more, and the mother Rebecca to love Jacob more. And as we pick up our text on this morning, we find an interaction between the two brothers. Jacob, who hung around the crib, if you will, has made a pot of stew mm -hmm. while Esau has been out in the field. Well, well. Digging more, whatever he did out in the field yeah. had him on him. Wow. For the Bible says that he was weary. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Amplified, the code, the Amplified puts it like this. The Amplified said he was Fashed. The brother was all empty. Mm -hmm. But let me come to tell you, when you are empty, you are easy prey. Yes, right. That's why you gotta stay full. Yep. Look, look at what happens in the text. Esau comes in with an empty stomach. Esau comes in and he's famished. Wow. And Jacob sees it as an opportunity yep. to beat him out of his birthright. Yep. Now you gotta understand. That in those days, when it came to family and herds, the oldest got a double portion of the estate. All right, all right. Won't know ifs, ands, and buts about The oldest got a double portion of the estate. All right. It was his birthright. Ain't like it is now. Now in most cases, we just let things happen. We just let them fight over what's ever left. Everybody mad, everybody face tore up, frowned up, because they got this and they ain't get this and they ain't get that again. But this thing back then was set in stone. All right. The oldest got a double push. So as Esau comes in from the field running on him, yes. He wants some of that stew, brother Zion. He wants some stew. Right. And he pleads with his brother, feed me some of that red stew. Well, Jacob says to him, he says, well, yeah. if you sell me <laughs> your birthright. Your birthright. Yes, and he saw the creeds. Look at what he decreed. He said, I am about to die. What is a birthright to me? So he swore to him and sold him his birthright. Wow. Sold him his birthright. He ate the stew. And my brothers and my sisters, I believe that Esau teaches us something today about the dangers of running on empty. Wow. He was empty in the system. But spiritually beloved, we cannot be running on empty. Because it is a dangerous thing. So what Esau teaches us is this, number one. He teaches us that you got to control your hunger. Beloved, we can't let our hunger go unchecked. 
because it will lead us to making bad decisions. Esau has an empty belly, and the stew looks so appealing. But look when you get empty spiritually, everything looks so appealing. I got any witnesses out there? Yeah, when you get empty spiritually, everything looks so appealing. When you haven't been in your word, when you haven't been praying, when you ain't been coming to church, when you ain't been focused on God, everything looks so appealing. That, that's when we find ourselves doing what we ain't supposed to do. That's when we find ourselves falling for stuff we shouldn't be falling for. That's when we find ourselves with, uh, tripping up over stuff that shouldn't be tripping us up. In other words, let me make it plain. When, when, when we find ourselves empty spiritually, we can easily get caught in a trap. Y'all with me this morning? Let, let me make it plain to you. Our, 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 our friends that we hang with that tend to turn up a little bit too much. Uh, if we're not careful, what they are doing will look appealing to us. And the next thing we know, we're turning up too. We done got out of control. Our single friends who look like they having so much fun, they out there and what it looks like they doing looks like it's so much fun. And if I could just dibble and then I could just dabble. And the next thing you know, you find yourself dibbling and dabbling and you caught up in something that you ain't got no business being caught up in. Uh, we're around folk that, that's cussing and talking crazy. And, and the next thing you know, we start cussing and talking crazy because these things start to appeal to us. Don't y'all look at me crazy like we ain't never been there. When you get weak and empty spiritually, things will creep in that you never thought would creep in. You thought you was behind that thing. But as soon as you stop praying, as soon as you stop standing the word, as soon as you turn your back on Jesus, those things will start to look appealing because spiritually you are empty. Yeah, things like lying, things like deceit, things like jealousy, things like envy start to appeal to us when we are empty. So remember, we got to control our hunger by having a consistent uh, uh, diet for spiritual nourishment. Uh, when we get famished in the field, we got to have a diet that gives us spiritual nourishment uh, so that we won't get empty while we're out here on the battlefield for the Lord. Uh, trying to let our light shine, uh, trying to live holy, trying to let God get the glory out of our lives. Uh, we got to stay full uh, that we won't find any and everything appealing. Uh, in other words, we got to control our hunger. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor, say control your hunger. Control your hunger, you got to control your hunger so that you don't get empty. Yes, second thing, I'm going to get out of here in about five, ten more minutes, I'm going to get out of here. Second thing, second thing he teaches us is this. When you get empty, you tend to live for right now. Well, well. Let me say it again. When you get empty spiritually, you tend to live for right now. You tend to live for right now. When you look at the text, even more, Esau wants to stew because his stomach is empty. Jacob says, sell me your birthright. Esau responds. Mm -hmm. He says, man, I'm about to die. <laughs> yes, now, he just been in the field. Sure, he's tired. Yeah. Sure, he's hungry. Yeah. Sure, his stomach is empty. Mm -hmm. But look at what he says. He says, man, I'm about to die. What good is a birthright? <laughs> because he is empty digging for He is willing to throw away his future mm -hmm. just to satisfy right now. Right. Yes, and let me come to tell you, many of us get empty spiritually and we throw away our future living in the moment. Think about it like this. Think about it like this. Y'all have heard us in the church we refer to God as the father of Abraham, Isaac, 
and Jacob. Anybody ever heard that? Yes, sir. We refer to God as the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it should have been Abraham, Adam, and Esau. Well, well. Y'all with me? The birthright and the promise could have been Esau. Well. He was the oldest. A double portion of his father's stuff yep. should have fell on him. But because his stomach was empty, he sold it away, only concerned with the present moment. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Church, church, I come to tell you this morning, I come to tell you, don't you mess up what you could have by living in the moment. No, don't, don't do it. Don't mess up what you could have, what you can have by living in the moment. You got to live according to your future. In other words, don't throw away what God has for you uh, for the pleasures of this old world. Uh, uh, don't let lust, don't let fun, don't let pleasure, don't let money, don't let fame, don't let possessions keep you from your destiny in God. Uh, and can I tell you what your destiny in God is? Uh, your destiny is to be in glory with your Savior. I got your witnesses in here. That's the goal of a life for a Christian. Now, don't you let the fact that you are spiritually empty and want to please yourself now keep you from going to glory. Oh yeah, I wish y'all would receive that. I come to tell somebody it ain't worth it. Now, for the Bible said that eyes have not seen it and ears have not heard. It ain't even entered into the heart of man what God has in store for those that love him and stay full spiritually. I come to tell you, don't you go other way. Don't you throw it away. I don't care how good it looks. I don't care how much fun it is. I don't care what it tastes like. I don't care how much money it costs. Don't you throw it away because your future is bright in the Lord. Anybody glad that God has a future for you that eyes ain't even seen and it can't even be put into our little minds the thing that God has for his people. And don't you throw it away, beloved, for satisfaction and pleasure now. Because it ain't worth it. Look at your neighbor telling me it ain't worth it. Number three, and I'm going home. Number three, I'm going home. Going home for my people. But let me tell you, the third thing the text teaches us is that when you empty, you will develop an eye don't care attitude. Got to be careful. That's why you got to stay full. Because when you get empty, you can develop an I don't care attitude. Mama, wait a minute. Esau was empty. Yes. That when Jacob presented him with the proposition. Basically, thinking more about his actions. Mm -hmm. He says, man, I don't care about my birthright. Mm -hmm. You can have it. Just give me some stew. <clears throat> well, beloved, I come to tell you, don't you get empty. But you got to stay full. Yes, sir. Because emptiness will make you not care. My God. Emptiness will make you throw in the tie. Right. Emptiness will make you give up. Uh -huh. Emptiness will make you take your eyes off the prize. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what Esau threw away. Esau threw away wealth. Esau threw it away prosperity. Esau threw it away honor. Esau threw it away reference. Everything that he could have had, Jacob ended up with. He would have been the recipient of the promise. But because he was empty, 
And for a moment, he didn't care. He missed out on all the things that he could have had. I need you to hear that one more time. Because he was empty, he missed out on all the things that he could have had. Good afternoon, new friend. I'm on my way home. But let me tell you before I leave this place that you got to stay full. Stay full and don't get empty. Every day that the Lord lets you see, you got to make up in your mind that I'm going to eat enough to stay strong. I'm going to eat the bread and the bread will sustain me. I'm going to eat the bread and the bread will strengthen me. I'm going to eat the bread and the bread will secure me. I won't get empty. But I will stay full When I wake up in the morning I'ma have me some songs for breakfast When I take a break in the noonday I'ma nibble on some proverbs When I feast late in the evening I'ma get me some Matthew Mark Some Luke Paul John And for a bedtime snack I'ma get me a package of two From the Apostle Paul and that will, I said that will, keep me strong. That will, I said that will sustain me. That will, I said that will, give you what you need to stay on the battlefield for the Lord. It'll give you what you need to fight the good fight with. It'll give you what you need, what you need. To run this race, it'll give you what you need, what you need to please your God. Stay full, beloved. I said, stay full and receive the full measure of what God has for you. He has plans to prosper you. He has plans to bless you. He has plans to give you. Of your heart. I wish I had two or three friends that are excited about the plans that God has for you. You can have it, but you gotta stay full. You can have it, but you gotta stay full. You can't throw it away. You can't give it away. You can't trade it in. You gotta stay full. Eat the bread and stay full. Eat the bread. And one day, and one day, you will walk in every blessing that the Lord has in store for you. Is there anybody that believes if you stay full, if you keep on eating your bread, and you never get empty, that God has a blessing for you with your name on it. If it's prosperity, Lord, give it to me. If it's health, Lord, give it to me. If it's strength, Lord, give it to me. If it's wisdom, Lord, give it to me. If it's understanding, Lord, give it to me. I will stay full and walk in the blessings of the Lord. Is there anybody in here that believes that you can have it, that it's yours? Do you believe that you can have it? It's yours, but you gotta stay full. Stay full and every day. Make up in your mind that Lord, I wanna please you on this day. Lord, I wanna give you glory on this day. Lord, I wanna walk in your way on this day. And how can I do it? You can do it by staying full. Eat your bread early in the morning. Eat your bread in the noonday time. Eat your bread 
early in the evening. Eat your bread late at night. And your bread, I said your bread, I said your bread will take you all the way. Is there anybody in here that believes that the bread will take you all the way? Well, Pastor, what's all the way? Everything down here is all right. But I want the bread to take me higher. Is there anybody in here that wants the bread to take them higher? If you stay full, the bread will take you higher. I said the bread will take you higher. It'll take you to a place where the streets are paved with trouble. It'll take you to a place that has a crystal sea. It'll take you to a place that has a fount of blood that's drawn from a man to a man. It'll take you higher. It'll take you higher. I said the bread will take you higher. And all you got to do is stay cool. Stay cool. Don't get it. Don't get it. Don't do it. You got to stay near the cross. Got to do it. You got to stay near the cross. Keep your eyes on the bread. Eat your bread. Stay full of it. Stay full. Many of us have been there. We're doing good. Come to church, read our Bibles, doing everything we need to do. Stay in relationship with Christ. All of a sudden, bad habit to slip in. We get off agony and skin. Bad habit to slip in. Next thing we know, we, we get empty here and empty. We need more and more space the enemy to come in. See, when we fool on things of the spirit, there's no place in your inner man for the enemy to dwell. Stay full. Stay full. Stay full. Stay in your words. Stay on your knees. Stay looking to the hills from which come if you help. Then he can't trip you up with them hunger games. You can't do it. You can't do it. Because you're strong. You're ready for battle. Whenever he throws you away, you're ready to confront him. If you just stay full. Just stay full. We have lived in Christ Jesus. We can be Christians and have no fun. God bless us. He came that we might have life and life what? More abundantly. That's what he came for. That's physically and spiritually. Ain't nothing wrong with enjoying life if we stay full spiritually. Then there's no room for the enemy to trip us. There's no room for him to come in. Because we're strong. Got what we need to find him off. Yeah. Stay full, brother. Come on, open the doors of the church. Stand on your feet. I'm open the doors of the church. I'm going to make this call. There's one here today. You don't know the Lord in the free part of your sin. You're empty. 